you read the word I'm telling you right now, you're going to be sitting there like, this is better than baddies. Look, I'd be listening to loud music in my car with the windows wide open. Because one, I'm Puerto Rican. And two, <laughs> he's basically, I love you. <laughs> I just realized that. The Lord is literally telling them, y'all are just stupid. <laughs> Excuse me. It's so funny the way that God works out. Ouch! Your secret's out, by the way. Lord. Hola and hello, welcome back to Talks with Tally. My name is Tally, welcome if you've never been here before. For those of you that don't know, this is a segment on my channel where I speak about the Lord, I have faith talks with you all, and I share the word that the Lord has placed on my heart for you today. And it's just so funny to me because this word, it's just the way that the Lord sets everything up and it's literally so perfectly, divinely planned. I. Uh, I'll get right into it. Let's pray first, and then I'll tell you what happened this morning. Father God, I come before you in this moment. Lord, as your daughter, I want to say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to speak the word that you have placed upon my heart, Lord. I ask that in this moment, Lord God, that it be you speaking, Lord God, not me. Place a filter in front of my mouth, Lord. Let this truth be for the person across the screen in this moment, Lord. Let it be you blessing them, Lord, giving them the message that they need to hear from you today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. That was kind of a short one, I know. <laughs> I usually pray really long, but I actually had already prayed before I even started the video. I'm ready to say what it is that he wants me to say. Glory to God. Amen. So we're going to get started. This is episode nine. Guys, we're almost to the double digits. Ah, that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> so as many of you know, I've always been myself and the Lord has graced <laughs> me with the opportunity to speak his word whilst also having my personality in the mix. Not my words, not my truth, but my personality when I speak. I feel like sometimes some of the words I, I, I speak definitely are humorous. That's just my personality and the Lord is okay with that. So I love it. So the title for this, which the Lord has allowed, thank you Lord, is called Your Fruits Be Snitching. <laughs> Episode nine, Talks with Tally. We're gonna get right into it. What happened this morning? So, so funny because the Lord knew, obviously I was planning on probably recording this day. He set this up. It was just so divinely constructed, so divinely planned. I just, I don't even know how he does this sometimes. Sometimes I'd be reading the word, right? And I stopped reading the word one day. And then the next time I pick it up, that exact word that I was going to restart on is exactly the word that I actually need for that day. <laughs> because the Lord makes no mistakes. There's no coincidences in him. He is consistent, perfectly consistent. I gotta be honest with you guys. So this is kind of interesting because I didn't actually have a story to really go with this, but being very transparent with you all, I have been out of the dating world for a good while now, years actually. And ever since I gave my life to Christ, which was back at the beginning of this year, even less so, of course, I don't actually have I haven't spoken to anybody at all. I have been just focused on my relationship with the Lord and that is it. It's just me and God. The Lord even told me one time he was jealous about me. <laughs> I know he says that about all of us, but let me just have my moment <laughs> because there's no favoritism with the Lord. Amen. But I remember a prophet came into the church one time and you know, the Lord spoke through the prophet and said to me that he is jealous with me, that nobody that will get around me, that tries to get around me, if they are not sent from his part, he will remove them. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, protect me. Yes. I was telling my cousin yesterday, I was like, if the Lord, I'm so obsessed and I'm so in love with the Lord that if the Lord was a physical person, right? Today's day and age, we would have to lock me up. Lock, lock me up. I would be a stalker. I would be an actual stage five clinger. Um, and she responded, thank God that he doesn't have social media because <laughs> the Lord, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed, I'm in love. So anyways, that's the relationship that I have right now is a relationship with the Lord. And I don't want another one to be honest. Pero que sea lo que Dios quiera. Let it be God's will, whatever it may be. If the Lord has a partner for me in the future, then so be it. But it must be a man of the Lord and it must be the one that God has chosen because I know what God gives, he's going to give it good. Amen. For the first time in 
I don't even know how long, um, someone had reached out to me and expressed some interest romantically in me. And there was something just not right. There was something in my spirit that was uncomfortable just yesterday. This happened literally less than 24 hours ago. This person was attempting to, you know, court me, whatever. I'm getting to know him. I'm like, what church do you go to? Like, what do you believe? Like, you know, things like that. Just really small talk for the most part, but I'm always going to keep it Lord centered because you thought, you thought you could slip through the cracks. That's not going to happen. I'm a princess, the Lord said. Amen. <laughs> there was just something not right in my spirit. And I feel like the Lord was discerning in that moment that this person was not for me. You know, talking to me for the day, I spoke with the person perfectly fine. No issue. That's fine. I did find the person attractive. So I was like, oh, that doesn't usually happen. I don't really find people attractive, if I'm honest. I'll give it a shot just to have conversation. But best believe my focus is always number one, the Lord. Always. If you think, enemy, we rebuke you in Jesus' mighty name. If you think I'm going to turn away from the Lord because of a man, you're bugging. Last night, I prayed before I went to bed after speaking with this person all day, whatever it was. And I said, Lord, if he's not for me, remove him. I literally met him less than 12 hours before that. And I said, Lord, confirm it. Let this person post something on their social media that shows me that they're not right with you, Lord, or that in general, they're not right for me. They are not the one that you have set apart for me, Lord. Why'd I do that? So the next morning, the person posted something that was pretty vulgar and crude about something related to genitals. <laughs> and I hadn't seen anything like that on his social medias that I looked at earlier yesterday morning. So I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that was a Lord revealing exactly what it was that I need to see. And this is not judgment on that person at all, at all. I prayed for this person and I gave this person a word that I feel like the Lord had placed on my heart to give to him. That just meant that he just wasn't for me. It doesn't mean that God doesn't have a purpose with that person. It doesn't mean that the Lord isn't gonna work with that person. I have faith that the Lord will work with that person. It just means that he wasn't meant to be my man. That's all. <laughs> That's not the one that the Lord has set apart for me. And so I had to let him know that. And so we fall back into the topic of today, your fruits be snitching on you. Sorry to tell you, but your secret is no longer a secret. Matthew 21, 18 to 22. I'm gonna read it for you and then we're gonna break it down. The word of the Lord is read in Jesus mighty name. Amen, amen. I have the New International Version. It says, early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? They asked. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, Lord, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but you can also say this to the mountain. Go throw yourself into the sea, saying it to the mountain, and it will be done. Lord, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Ah! Just a few things I'm going to note here. A tree usually in the Bible, biblically, it signifies life. The purpose of a tree is to provide something. The purpose of a tree is to give something right? Whether it be sap, whether it be shade, whether it be fruit. Mm. This, I guess, scene, you can call it, we're seeing that Jesus is walking on a road, he's hungry, and he's in need of something. Oh, Lord! So he goes to where he would go to be provided something, a fig tree. Yet he runs into a fig tree without figs. That's like when you go to McDonald's and they'd be like, sorry, we don't have any fries. It's my whole life what? or when their ice cream machine is always broken. Like, how? One time I went to a Burger King. You wanna know, <laughs> you wanna know what they told me? This is sorry, we don't have no burgers. <laughs> Excuse me? What do you mean you don't have no burgers? You're a Burger King. I don't understand. <laughs> and therefore, what your purpose is, you're not doing. Lord, what you are meant to do, you're not doing. Oh, let's get into it. Let me grab my book. So first I'm gonna get into some of the actual context, the actual physical, you know, life of a fig tree, uh, things like that, what they were used for in biblical times and whatnot. We're gonna break that down and then I'm gonna break down the verse, okay? So I'm just gonna read a few notes from my book that I study from. 
manners and customs of biblical times. It states, fig trees were valued for their fruit and for their shade. Like the vine, fig trees became a symbol of security and of prosperity. Fertility is another one. They grew wild and in the wild state, the female fig blossoms had to be pollinated by a wasp that developed inside the inedible Capri figs, Ooh! which grew several times a year. Inedible, Lord, they were inedible during development. The word that the Lord has placed in your heart, unless he's actually worked with you and it's still developing, it's not yet for someone else to eat. It's not yet for someone else to consume. Ah, Lord. Mind you, it says that this fig tree grows. Mind you, it also says that the Capri figs, these figs grow several times a year. Mm. The cultivated tree was often planted in a vineyard, and if the tree was allowed to grow to its fullest height, it would reach 30 feet. But if it was on rocky soil, ooh, unhealthy soil, or was cut back regularly, it could be limited to a bush. Don't let yourself be limited. Oh, Lord. Hold on. It says here, the bad figs seen by Jeremiah may be the inedible male Capri figs. Because if you were to eat a fig, it's the female one that you usually eat, which house the fig wasps while they develop. Jesus may have been looking for either remaining winter figs or for the first ripe figs because they grow throughout the year. Whichever was missing indicated that the tree was infertile. Long story short, the tree was infertile and would not give a main crop at the time of figs. Ooh. Jesus confirmed its uselessness by causing its death at the time of figs. If you ain't ready to go when he says it's time, come on. We're starting early, Lord. <laughs> I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pollination process a little bit, because I just want us you to see something real quick. If I can, I'll put up pictures, okay? But if I can't, I'm so sorry. So it begins, the female fig wasp is attracted to the fig aroma, right? And then there's like this little opening at the bottom of the fig that's called an osteole. So it's only the female fig wasp that does this, goes in through the hole and then stays in the fig whilst it's pollinating it. It stays with the fig while it's pollinating it. I'm not talking about figs, amen? <laughs> and actually they die in the fig. Therefore, they're with it forever. And then the enzymes that are in that fig actually break it down for proteins. Because our God doesn't die, but he remains with us forever. Ah, Lord. So they lay the eggs and they pollinate the fig in the process. And after laying the eggs, the female wasp dies. The eggs of the female fig wasp, they will hatch inside. And then that offspring will then mate. This is all happening inside of fruit, which mind you, it's kind of funky because it's kind of... It's not a fruit, it's known as a, a siconium. I don't even really know. I'm not a gardener person, whatever it's called to know about that stuff. Actually inside of a fig is hundreds of little flowers. It's so cool. It's so, so cool if you see it. It says, then the males inside, they create tunnels for the females to exit. Lord, they sacrifice their life. Oh my God. This is another example of how men should be loving their women, amen. For men should be loving their women as Christ loved the church. Oh my God, wait, this is another message. Lord, hold on, I didn't realize this the first time. Males create tunnels for females to exit and then they die. The males always end up dying as soon as they actually create those tunnels for the females to go out so then they can continue to pollinate other figs and repopulate. I'm done. That's so sad. Sorry, I just I just realized that. They literally created tunnels for them and then as soon as they reach outside, they die. Because male fig wasps, they don't grow um, wings. So they just fall out and die. Female wasps then exit the fig with pollen on their bodies and then they enter a new fig and start the process all over again. Wow, wow, wow. That is so interesting. Let's get right into that word. We're gonna break it down really quick. I just wanted you guys to uh, kind of understand um because i didn't know anything about the fig trees at all i had no idea what the fig fruit was i didn't i know nothing but we'll get into it a little bit more later too okay that's crazy oh my gosh that's so sad the men really honestly the the lord says in his word that although we are equally loved by the lord the lord absolutely does hold us all accountable but every time it comes a point for the Lord to question why something happened maybe in a household or with a tribe or whatever it is, he'd always 
he always does point at the man. And we want to get mad, like, blah, blah, who's better than who? It's not that who's better than who, but God has appointed the men to be the leaders of the house. But they are to love their wives. As Christ loved the church. You willing to die for your girl? That's what I thought. <laughs> so this fig tree was in the road where many shall pass. Many shall pass by you. But if you have nothing to give or nothing to offer, what are you doing with what he's placed in you? Listen, all I'm gonna say is this. I told my friend last night this when we were doing a Bible study on the beach. I said, listen, we have Paul and we have Elijah in the Bible, but now we have Paula. I'm finna be Paula because they were tough and they say exactly how it is and I'm gonna tell you exactly how it is. <laughs> Call me Paula, y'all. I'm gonna just tell you the truth. You're being selfish. There is a truth that you have encountered in Christ Jesus in the Lord and you have yet to share it. You've kept it to yourself. You've caged it in. Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. Hold on, I gotta find that word now. Me and my friends were on the beach last night and we did a Bible study talking about Jeremiah, right? And in the beginning it says that when God called Jeremiah, Jeremiah was a youth. So I'm assuming most Jewish boys in the time, once they hit like 13, right? That's when they're kind of like considered a man, whatever it may be. So if he was a youth in this time, imagine how young he was. He was less than 13 years old. So imagine the Lord speaking to you, right? And he's calling you. He says in the word, Jeremiah 1, 4, it says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And then Jeremiah responded, alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I don't know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Wow. Wow. It doesn't say, yeah, you're equipped. Yeah, you are everything. You're great. You're amazing. You're going to do fine, sweetie. You're doing fine, sweetie. No, he says, I got you. It's me. It's my word. I've commanded you. And guess what? I will rescue you. So you have nothing to worry about. And if we continue on to verse 17, it says, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. That literally is a father saying, you embarrass me. I'm finna embarrass you. Just that those first two chapters of Jeremiah that I have read so far, at least, I, I can't even imagine what I'm going to encounter next, is literally a father yelling at his children, saying, have I not told you I already have your back? Have I not told you you have nothing to worry about? So when I say you've been selfish, I mean it to say that you could be doing so much more with what the Lord has placed upon your life and in your heart and in your mouth to speak. But due to lack of relationship, due to lack of closeness with the Lord, due to lack of faith, lack of obedience. Lord, you have nothing to offer others. And actually you've encountered this goodness and you're deciding to just keep it all to yourself. That's what selfish people do. It just doesn't make sense. To find a believer, to find someone that claims to be a Christian, yet you see no product of what it is to have a relationship with the Lord to be Christ-like. It doesn't make any sense. The math is not mathing. Imagine you're driving down a long highway, right? And you see a gas station, right? So you're expecting, I can go to this rest stop where this gas station is, and I can find maybe some gas, some snacks, something to keep me going along the way, something to refresh me. Ooh, Lord, something to rejuvenate me on this long journey. You could be tired on this journey and you need something new. You need new energy. You need new spirit, new life, new word, new something to keep you going. Something new to keep you holding on to until you get to your destination. And then you get to this gas station, you have all these high expectations and hopes of what it is that you can find for you to grab onto. And then the worker at the gas station tells you, actually, we have no gas and we have no snacks. And actually we have none of the things here to uh, help you forward. And actually all of this is just for show. Ouch! This is exactly what the Lord is speaking about in his word. How can we claim to know him and not one thing about us has produced the fruit of the spirit? And we'll get into those. When Jesus stopped at this fig tree, he found nothing except leaves. Okay. And what we spoke about earlier is that when you also have a fig tree that is not growing properly, it is not developing property properly. It is due to unhealthy soil, unhealthy circumstances or environments. Lack of sunlight can be a reason. He's also called the sun in the word. Just saying unhealthy soil. Hello. <laughs> the foundation. Oh, 
or the tree being too young and underdeveloped. It was just leaves. It was just for show. Not only that, let's look at this. In book of Genesis, it says, Adam and Eve used fig leaves, Lord, to cover their nudity after eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They had sewn garments for themselves to cover their privates. This represents to us the mere outward appearance of spirituality. This is the form of religion without actual relationship with the Lord, without the actual Holy Spirit in your life and within you. So wild to me because it really is like, y'all haven't gotten it yet. The devil's name literally says evil in his name. De evil. <laughs> in Spanish, de means from. De evil. Hello? <laughs> like, this is crazy. If there are no fruit being produced from you, and like I said, there will be fruit of the spirit that we will discuss further. Is that gospel? Is that good news being spread? Is who you are as a person changed? Are you working in the way that the Holy Spirit would want you to work and respond and behave? Y'all just can't be looking holy on the outside, trying to cover up this lack of love, lack of word, lack of relationship, lack of anointing, Lord, lack of connection with God in public. But trust me when I say that those that truly have a relationship with the Lord, they've been given. Everybody has access to this connection. And in that discernment that everything that is not happening in private in your life, Lord, 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 or therefore is also happening behind closed doors because you cannot hide from the Lord. God sees it. And actually, it's a lot more obvious than you think for others. Trust me, outsiders that have the Holy Spirit within them, they can tell the difference. Jesus said in the verse, may you never bear fruit again. It doesn't mean that you haven't before. Lord, it's that your fruits prior were rotten. What came from you has no love, has no encouragement, has no hope. As a matter of fact, it was a poisonous fruit before and be spreading and multiplying intoxicating those around it i can't i can't in hebrews paul speaks of how you cannot taste the truth the word of god for real for real and encounter the lord and then stray away because where he is it change bro it changes your life so the Lord said, okay, you're useless. So therefore, why should we prolong something that's choosing to be fruitless, useless? So then it immediately withered because according to the Lord, it was not fulfilling its original purpose in the first place. So truly, what is it needed for? Like a lot of people like to throw around the term lukewarm Christian um, in regards to that verse. I believe it was in Revelation. Actually, I have it here. Hold on. In Revelation 3, it says, I think it's verse 14 or 15 to 16 around there. It says, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. What the verse is saying is that cold has a purpose. Hot has a purpose but lukewarm is purposeless. It is useless. So therefore something in the middle, mm, something that's not one or the other, it doesn't have a use or purpose to it. My favorite part about this verse is where it says, and do not doubt. To doubt is a feeling of uncertainty or lack of convictions. How many times do I have to say that the word of the Lord is certain? He eliminates all uncertainty. It is promise. Conviction is defined as the showing that one is firmly convinced of what one believes or says. When he says you can do what I did to this fig tree or tell a mountain to go into the sea, the sea usually symbolizes sin or hell in the Bible. Long story short, what he's saying here is send that mountain, that trial, that tribulation, that problem in front of you, that plot from the enemy, we rebuke him in Jesus' mighty name, send that problem back to its sender. Send it straight back to hell. Lord, the Lord is speaking here. He's saying you will be able to tell the truth from the lies when you can decipher the fruits of another spirit. Lord, you can call out and sit down. He had to sit down that fig tree. He said, mm -mm, I'm gonna bring it down here real quick. Mountains are also shown to show us how much faith we should have in him. This is when uh, the disciples tried to cast out a demon and they were not able to. And this is Jesus' response when they said, why could we not do it? Matthew 17, 20, it says, he replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. 
nothing will be impossible for you. Oh, I have to give you guys actually a testimony about what happened this past week. I gotta be honest with you. Our belief in what he's told us is also a fruit. This past week, the last message I had recorded was um, a fan and the author. And that word truly came with spiritual warfare at a very high peak for the past week or so. And when I say I was going through a spiritual battle, I was going through a spiritual battle. There was tormenting, being attempted, all these other things. And I was so confused. I didn't know what was going on. And that's obviously how you know it's not coming from the Lord, right? When you get those feelings of fear, of confusion, you don't know what's going on, you're questioning a lot. That's how you know it's not from the Lord, okay? There came a night where I was like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I'm confused. Da -da 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 -da. I don't even know. I was having a moment with the Lord and I was just crying my eyes out. I just cried it all out. I let it out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know if I want this, you know, ministry. I don't know if I want this calling. That's how bad it got. Because there's moments, of course, where the enemy likes to obviously get you to that point. And then I was like, God, I'm relying solely on you. Let it be you, Lord, not me. Let it be you. And then I had realized that that was the first time I probably said that in the last few days. I didn't give it to God. I was trying to fight things with my own strength. No, it's not you're supposed to do. It. You're never gonna win. Never gonna win that way. So I prayed and I heard his voice say, there will be joy in the morning. And so that night I still felt like I had literally just gone through the ringer. Like I literally got out of like a physical fight. Like I felt like my clothes were all tatted, like type. <laughs> I felt like my clothes were all like tattered and everything. It was just one of those. I wake up in the morning and I'm not kidding. I had this overabundance of joy and happiness. I was ecstatic. I was up in my house. I was dancing. I was praising. I was, I couldn't stop. I had so much joy. And then that same day, an apostle came to preach at my church and he prophesied over my life and the Lord had spoke to me directly. It was just so amazing to see the way the Lord, he spoke and then he also confirmed. That entire word that the apostle preached was for me, 100%. But then on top of that, God graced me with the ability to hear his voice and him speak to me directly and say things that I needed to hear and things I loved hearing and some things I was like, Okay, correction, amen, I'll receive it. <laughs> but there will be joy in the morning if any of you need to hear it. Because throughout those days, I still kept praying, I still kept reading, and I clung to the promise, my belief in his promise of what he said for my life. I believe what the Lord has told me in my life. I believe what he has said about me and what he wants for me. That verse, joy in the morning, comes from his word. It comes from the Bible. It says, Psalm 30, verse five, it says, for his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night. I still kept crying that night, just saying a little bit. <laughs> but joy comes in the morning. So for those of you that don't know, if you ever see a Christian talking about planting the seed, planting the seed, oh my God, they're planting the seed. I, listen, I'd be listening to loud music in my car with the windows wide open. Cause one, I'm Puerto Rican and two, <laughs> Two, now that it's not secular music anymore, now it is music for the Lord. Y'all gonna hear about this word of the Lord, even if it's a music ways, mechanisms, whatever the word is. I don't even know what I'm looking for anyways. I don't care. I really be driving and thinking that like gospel music is really just planting the seed in every single person that's hearing, hearing it. And they see me praising with my hand lifted in the car. I don't care. I know for a fact, some people, a seed is planting it. I don't care. <laughs> Y'all think about how small seeds are. That's all we are responsible for as Christians is just to plant the seed in the word of God. The thing is about planting seeds though, this is a cyclical thing that's so opposed to occur. Oh my gosh, Lord, amen. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just rece received that download. Lord, glory to you, Father. It is a cyclical thing. When a farmer has a farm and he's planting seeds, there comes a point where he takes it out and has to replant new seeds. Remember that that seed in you it will grow and it will flourish but then some plants also they have seeds that fall out of them and they have to get replanted and regrown it doesn't stop it keeps going i'm going to advise you guys to read because i can't read that whole thing right now it's matthew 13 1 to 48 um it speaks about the parable of the wheat and weeds and the sower as well long story short this entire uh, section it speaks of the way that we should plant seeds right which is the gospel, the word of God. This is how we should spread the message of the Lord to people that may not know him. But it also speaks about how 
some may receive it as well and how some may actually grow it, whether it's in unhealthy soil, whether it's surrounded by weeds, things like this. Um, and these are all symbolic for other things. So I suggest absolutely reading that. The point is, is that your focus is to be on him and to have healthy soil, to have a healthy root, to have that foundation in him and his word. And it doesn't mean that some people may not listen because there probably will be lots of people, lots of people that probably won't listen. But there also may be some that they're probably thinking about it on their way home or some may receive in that moment because it's a word that they've been waiting for for a long time. Some may even think about it a few days later. And all you can do and hope for and pray for is that they don't open the door for the enemy again and actually shut it first and foremost. It unfortunately happens. And that also has been shown to me too. And it says so in the word actually, because unfortunately we can't be out here casting demons out and all these other things when the demons can absolutely come back and they also bring stronger ones with them the next time. And if that person is not right with the Lord and really truly seeking the Lord and closing those doors, they will fall into that trap and it'll be harder the second time around. People can only be saved if they want to be saved. It's really interesting to me when I also hear those phrases or those questions when people say, what keeps a man? What keeps a woman? Someone that want to be kept. Quite blank, period. God doesn't make anybody do anything against their will. He does present the opportunity. Matthew 7, 16 to 20, it says, you will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad trees bear bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. When we spoke about the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we spoke about the fact that the knowledge of evil is the exposure to the enemy. The thing is, sometimes we like to forget that God doesn't let us know things or see things because we will probably mess it up. We will probably get in our own way. That's why his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Our knowledge and our brains create curiosity to a dangerous level. And sometimes even with certain knowledge, we like to test it because sometimes we like to feel invincible as if we can't be reached or touched or maybe that won't happen to us. Like sometimes to be honest, being very open and honest and raw with y'all, I be thinking sometimes, you know, it would be nice to have a certain schedule, to be able to spend more time with the Lord, maybe hopefully make money from YouTube eventually, you know, monetize, whatever it may be, not paying for the Lord's word. That's not what I'm saying, but it would just be nice to have some form of income, right? where it would alleviate me having to be in person working and doing other things and taking from my time with the Lord that I could have, right? And actually making the YouTube videos is me spending more time with the Lord too, right? And this is just me being transparent, you know? I get to spend time with God and also be able to let out my creative, you know, things that I want and ticks and little desires and whatever it may be. Like, let's go. Like, <laughs> But who knows, and this has been my prayer for a while, Lord, God, let me be somebody that you can trust because what if God does not or cannot trust me yet with more free time, with more money? Will my vision go astray? I would love to hope not. I pray, I hope that's not the case. But what if it were to make me look another way? A way where I don't look at him the whole time? Or what if I do with that time and with that money, things that I shouldn't? Like right now in my schedule, because it is so so busy and I don't have that much time, I genuinely sacrifice and I make an extra, extra effort truly at my core to spend more time with the Lord. Because right now I don't have that much liberty in my schedule. Every time I can have some time to spend with the Lord, I dedicate it to him solely. But what if I did have that liberty and I didn't have those restrictions? Would I still feel that want, that push, that urge to spend more time with him? Or would I do with that time and with money or whatever it may be, other things, instead of truly focusing on him how he wants me to? It's the same way that people say, you know, the more money that you make, the more that you spend. It isn't deemed the same standard or value when you have more of something to be able to give it up. It's easy to give a lot when you have a lot, but what happens when you don't? How much more does it truly mean? So there are nine, I believe it is, fruits of the spirit that we will get into. But I will say that there's also another fruit here that really called my attention to the word, in the word, and it's the fruits of wisdom. Ooh, it's probably my favorite fruit, honestly, <laughs> that it talks about. Probably just because it encompasses, it's all encompassing. 
for me of all of the fruits of the spirit. You have to have it in order to be able to perform all the others and have all the others, I feel like. But again, everybody may be different. It's this one is the one that really struck out to me. It says Matthew 11, 18 to 19. It says for John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say he has a demon. This is him talking to some Pharisees or Sadducees. And these are like the people that are like non-believers, always fighting, always coming at his disciples for something. <laughs> for something, you're always looking for an excuse to not believe. You're always looking for an excuse to come at somebody. Um, so this is Jesus talking to them. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man, Jesus, came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. He's basically, I love you. <laughs> I just realized that. The Lord is literally telling them, y'all are just stupid. <laughs> y'all don't have no wisdom. Y'all are not seeing what's going on here. Y'all are not understanding that the fruits that you are seeing, the production, the produce of this labor is from God. That the same things that John and Jesus had produced that word. It's all the same. The produce, the offspring is the same. The result is the same because they have the fruits of the spirit. They have the fruit of wisdom. It says, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Vindicated signifies clear someone of blame or suspicion, show or prove right, reasonable or justifiable. In another Bible, it says, yet wisdom is shown to be right by what it does by her deeds, by her children, by what her followers do. Lord, Luke 7 to 35, it says, nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. Lord, Lord, Lord. Proverbs 2, 1 to 11. This is what I'm going to read, but I suggest that you read the whole chapter at home because it's quite a bit. It says, the value of wisdom. My child, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, understanding said twice already, Lord, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. If you want to understand what he has for your life, for your calling, for whatever it is that you want to know about, ask him for understanding, ask him for wisdom. He will give it to you, Lord. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright and he is a shield to those who talk blamelessly, guarding the paths of justice Justice and preserving the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path for wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Prudence will watch over you and understanding will guard you. There are some things that we are not meant to know, but other than those secrets that the Lord has kept for himself, he says you can ask for understanding. He's offering it to you, Lord. And sometimes the Lord may do things that you don't understand now, but he will tell you later. Ah, it says so in his word, oh Lord. And actually that's, so, wow, that's a, wow. God, that's a confirmation because that's actually, wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you, Father. The Lord literally in this moment, because I was having difficulty the other day. Uh, I was having difficulty the other day when I was writing um, episode 10. I was not sure where the Lord was leading me with it because I had a title and I didn't really have any verses or Bible references, but I had a title and the Lord just started pouring. And that's actually is just a confirmation from the Lord that that is a word that has to be said and it is what the Lord wants. So I'm very thankful. What we don't understand now, we will understand later. And lastly, I'm just here to remind you that when the Lord comes into your life and he changes you, truly you have an encounter with the Lord. There has to be change. You cannot remain the same from before God and after God. It's not easy to do the things that actually go completely against what your physical wants. I also want to remind someone here that may have to hear this. We are also not rugs to be walked all over. As a Christian, you are not someone that should be allowing people to just walk all over you either though. There's a difference. None of these fruits have anything to do with tolerance. We are here to be truth. We are here to be the columns for our nations that have lost their foundation. 
that their foundation is cracked. They have instability and they have dissipated order. Matthew 12, 33 to 37, it says, either make the tree good and its fruits good, or make the tree bad and its fruits bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. What comes from you is what you're known for. Ooh, you brood of vipers. How can you speak good things when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. The good person brings good things out of good treasure, and the evil person brings evil things out of an evil treasure. I tell you on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter. Careless. Ooh, Lord. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. Y'all know how crazy it is. Vipers are literally snakes that when they're hatched, they literally bite through their mom and kill her and poison her as they're being born. So basically, like, they're like little baby poisonous hypocrites. Their mom births them, and then they say, well, guess what? One of them do with you anymore. Bite, 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 bite. I'm going to get out of here and do things on my own now. Deuces. Then they basically, their poison actually kills the mom. Uh, so Jesus cussed them out. I don't even care. <laughs> Literally, they don't care. Listen, when you see how the Lord actually speaks to some people, I'm just like, the fact that he's pent up all this wrath that he has and this anger that he has towards the people that really have gone against him in the way that they have. First of all, the way the Lord used to speak to people in the Old Testament, crazy. His rashes have nothing, nothing compared to what we do nowadays. I'm telling you, you read the word I'm telling you right now, you're going to be sitting there like, this is better than baddies. Like, like literally, I don't even watch that show, but like, I know it's like lots of drama, I think. I don't know. Y'all like reality television? I'm telling you right now, if you like drama, you like fights, I'm just saying, you want to read what, how the Lord used to speak to people? I'm just saying. It's because they deserved it. He came at them something, came at their neck, bro. Crazy. Went straight for the jugular. They deserved it though. But imagine how we are living now and the Lord has his pent up wrath that he's waiting to release. I could only imagine if he could just say those things to people back then. Imagine how much more he's gonna feel right now that he's been penting up, holding all of this anger for the last 2000 something years. Uh, <laughs> I'm scared for them. Not me, Lord, please keep me safe. Amen. All your children too, please, amen. The children of wisdom are not these formulaic, legalistic approaches to life. People think it's all about how to be successful and rich and have money and be so in intellectually intelligent and all these things. That is not the basis of wisdom, as the word tells us. That's all just superficial stuff there. The children of wisdom, the produce, the fruit of wisdom when you have it, is loving God with all of your heart having a sound mind, strength, and loving others, just as he has commanded us to do. Galatians 5, 22 to 25, I say this is the last verse here. By contrast, the fruit of the spirit, these are the ones that you should be striving for to produce. It says, by contrast, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. I know some of y'all need that, I do too. Kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Wow, that's a beautiful word. And it's a beautiful reminder. Thank you, Lord, for sharing it with me and with everybody across the screen today, Lord. This is just a reminder that what you bring forth, the fruit that you produce, is what shows what God has done. And if you hold back the things that the Lord has placed in you, especially when he says it's time to release them, because you don't want to go ahead of time. But if you don't have the fruit of the Spirit, when the Lord says it's time for the fruit, that's where you're going to find yourself in trouble. Make me someone that you want me to be. Make me the person that you have designed me to be. Lord, have me produce the fruits that you want me to produce. Mm, Lord, because the works done in private, the Lord rewards in public. So what you do in private, be careful that the Lord doesn't reveal in public. Lord, let's pray. 
Father God, I want to say thank you so much, Lord, for the word that you have spoken to us today, Lord. Glory to you, Father, always. Thank you so much, Lord, for the reminder that we needed, Lord, to remember who it is that you have called us to be, Lord, for the fruit that you have called for us to produce, Lord. And I ask you, Father God, that every person across the screen right now under the sound of my voice, Lord, that they be able, Lord God, to get closer to you, Lord, have a relationship with you, a connection with you that produces an offspring, Lord, that produces a fruit, Lord God, that it is clear that you reside in them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I ask that you remove any plans from the enemy against their life, against their fruit. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, that they be able to speak loud and clear of the good things that you have done in their life, of their belief in you, of their faith in you, Lord, that their fruit be able to spread and grow among others, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray over them, Lord. Love, safety, patience, and all the fruit of the Spirit be within them, Lord, and come from them, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you all for spending time with me and I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Bye.